How is everybody? Rocking? Oh, uh, this morning, you know, as we come up on the 4th of July, you know, we think about uh, uh, the freedom of our country. And we think about what that freedom means here in this country. That, that, you know, that we have access to a lot of things that other countries don't have. Uh, that we're able to do a lot of things that other countries ain't able to do. And, and you know, sometimes we take these freedoms for granted. Uh, what I want to talk to you this morning, what the Lord has put on my heart, is, is to, to stay with the same thing as far as freedom. A lot of times uh, as we go forth and, and we uh, have this freedom in Christ, you know, we don't walk in it. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to John 8, 36. And we'll start there. Everybody there? Y'all with me? It says this right here. It says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for just being so awesome and wonderful in our life. Lord, we ask this right here, that you just get me out of the way. Lord, use me as a vessel for your word. Deliver your word the way it's meant to be delivered. Lord, we ask that you till the grounds of the hearts of every person in here. Everybody that's watching over social media or, or you know, if they're listening over the radio this morning, we ask that you just till our hearts to receive this word. Lord, that we leave this service right here forever changed and growing in our relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do here this morning. We thank you for the salvation. We thank you for calling, uh, you know, maybe your children that, that, that's walked away in time past. We thank you for just bringing them home. Lord, anybody that's not walking completely and totally in their freedom. Lord, we, uh, we, we believe that right now that those chains are going to be broke, that they're going to be able to go forth and walk in that freedom. Lord, we thank you. We love you so much. And we just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you a story. It's a story about, about a 20-year-old Afghan woman. This 20-year-old Afghan woman, you know, that, uh, that, that she got a visa to come to the United States. As she come to the United States uh, to, to come over here and live, you know, that she got her place and everything. Uh, as she got her place, you know, she stayed in her apartment. She stayed in her apartment, what, become one month and then three months and then six months. And, uh, you know, she had some people go by and visit her and everything. They said, well, why aren't you doing anything? And she said, hey, what, what are you talking about? I'm in this country and everything. Uh, they said, well, have you, have you got out and went and drove? Have you got out and, you know, tried to get your driver's license? She said, can I do that here? Because I couldn't do it where I was from. So th they went through these things. They said, hey, you know what, you can get your driver's license. And she, she got all excited about this, so she... She, she went forth to pursue that, and then they, they, uh, they share these other things with her to say, hey, you know, that you can also go to school, because you couldn't do that over there. But you know, now that you're in a free country, you can go to school, that, that you know, that you ain't got to go outside with, with something wrapped around your face so, so that uh, people can't tell who you are. Over in the other country, that's what she had to do. Now here's the thing, is what, I, what really stuck out to me about this story is this right here. That it wasn't that she, it, that she come from a, a country of bondage as much as it was whenever she come into a country of freedom. Even though she was physically here in her freedom, she was not walking in her freedom. You understand what I'm saying this morning? A lot of times as we come to Jesus and we say the prayer and we say, you know, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, you know, uh, 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 set me free from this stuff, that he brings you into this free country, but we don't walk in our freedoms. Somebody? So I, I want to read this again. It says... Uh, it says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. You know, here's the thing. Some of us this morning were proclaiming to be Christians, and that's very accurate in our life. That, that, you know, if you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then that's accurate in your life. So, so what's happened is you come from this country of bondage to this country of freedom, but there's some freedoms that we're not walking in. And some of these freedoms, I mean, you know, as we look at our own personal life, 
That you not that we should be free from, from, from the fears or the guilt or the shame. That we should be free from, you know, if we're walking in depression today, that you know that we're free from this depression. You know, that if we have regret in our life, or you know, if we look in the mirror and see something that's different than what God sees in our life, that you know, if we think, hey, you know, that, that I'm the worst of the worst, when I look in the mirror, I don't see what God sees. Well, you know, what I've done is I've stepped into a country of freedom, but I've not stepped into the freedoms of that country. I'm here to tell you this morning that there's more. That there's more. The things that you're struggling with, that that God said that the reason that we're struggling with is because we've yet to activate the freedoms of the new country that we're in. Some of the things that we're dealing with, some of the things that we're going back and forth with, you know, that, uh, you know that, that we come to Jesus, but we still have depression in our life. The only reason that we have that depression in our life is because we're not getting out of the room to be able to say, hey, you know what, that I'm going to go get my license in this. To be able to say, hey, you know what, I'm not going to have depression. I'm going to have peace and I'm going to have joy. That I'm going to go forth and I'm going to live and not die. That I'm going to go forth and be that person. Let me tell you here this morning that there's a lot of freedoms that we have access to that we're not walking in. Some of us, we're we're, we're moping around and we're thinking, you know, we're we're dreading the day. Some of you dreaded getting up this morning. Some of you dreading, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, after the service. You know, some of you are thinking about what could happen in the next week or in the next month or the next, next year. You know, some of you are, uh, uh, some, some of us, we're, we're worrying and we're walking in fear. You know, when we see everybody else around us, we let the devil lie to us and say, hey, you know what, uh, 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 they're more loved than you. These little things that, that we're thinking, well, you know what, I'm not going to validate it. I'm not even going to, I'm, I'm not even going to recognize it's there. I'm not even going to work on it because, you know, it's just silly, but it's not. Because let me tell you this right here, that Jesus sets you free. What we want to do is we want to think about the big things. We want to think about the big things that people recognize in our life. We want to think about the, the addictions. We want to think about the habits. We want, to, we want to think about these things. But I'm going to tell you this right here, that we can still walk in and, and, you know, some, some kind of craziness in our life without having those big things in our life. That you know that He wants you to have that joy he wants you to have that peace he wants you to have that confidence that you can go forth and defeat these things in our life but i'm going to tell you what it takes just like it did with with this young lady it took her getting out of the house and when she learned about that freedom of getting her driver's license well she had to get a book she had to get a book and she had to start start going over this book and start practicing and going through all this to, to be able to get, finally get her license. Here's the thing, is we're thinking, hey, you know, that this whole Jesus thing. Well, you know what? Praise the Lord that he set me free from this and that and this and that. But there's some things that's grabbing a hold of our soul that we're not willing to fight to break loose from. That you know what, well, Sean, you know what, I had depression, my, my mama had depression, my grandmother had depression. You know what, it's just in the family. And you know what, and your kids are going to have depression too if you don't do something to break it. You know, let me tell you, let me tell you this right here. I mean, let's just, let's just get right down to it. It's in the family till it's not. It's in the family till it's not. Till, till we decide to get off our spiritual butts. And rise up and say, hey, you know what? It might have been in my mama. It might have been in my grandmama, but it's not going to be in me. You know, because it's in the family until it's not. You have power to make that decision. You have power to make that decision this day to to be able to say, hey, you know, the, the fear, it stops here. The worry, it stops here. You know what? I'm not going to look in the mirror and see something less than what God sees because if I do, my kids will. That it's got to stop. That you know what? I have these freedoms. I've come into this country. I was in a country. I was in a spiritual country that was oppressed like Afghanistan. But I'm not in that country anymore. I'm in a country of freedoms. Help me to walk out into these freedoms. 
Help me to be free from, from all that stuff. And you know, here's the thing is this young lady, she come to this free country with the mindset of someone who's oppressed, of a slave. Some of us, we've come to Jesus with that same mindset. We're like, you know, what, uh, I, I'm coming to Jesus, and, and you know, thank God that, 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 that he's received me, and, and you know, he, he set me free. However, you know, what, uh, I have the mindset of that individual that, that, that might feel a little unworthy. Can you imagine this young lady, as she went through 20 years of people in her country saying she wasn't good enough? Saying that she wasn't worthy of an education. That she was lesser than, than other, other people in that country. That you know what, if she did X, Y, and Z, then she would be persecuted and maybe even killed. That she come from 20 years of that, and she come from 20 years of that, that, that she brought that mindset into her freedom, so therefore was not able to, uh, to, to, to walk into that freedom. What she had to do one day. And what we need to do even today is come against our very mindset. It's to come against our very mindset to where, you know, my whole life I've been told this or I've been told that, that i got to come against it. You know, Gideon in the Bible, he, he said, you know, what, uh, uh, when, when the angel of the Lord came to Gideon and said, you know what, you come out, you mighty men of war. That he said, you know what, you, you, you must be mistaken because uh, I'm of the least clan and I'm the least of that clan. Because that's what he'd been told. Because that's what he had been told. He's saying, hey, you know, not only did he say, I'm, I'm of the worst family, but I'm the worst member of this family. And the angel of the Lord said, you come out, you mighty man of war. Because here's the thing, is what, what the angel of the Lord was doing and, and what the God was doing is he wasn't talking to the Gideon that everybody knew. He was talking to the Gideon that he created. He was, he was talking deep unto deep to say, hey, you know, I'm not talking to that guy. I'm talking to that guy. And it's time for that guy in your life to rise up. Yeah. You know, to be, able to, to be able to even get a little agitated about it, to say, hey, you know what, even, I mean, to, to, to be able to get in our mind to say even a little defeat is not acceptable. Even, even a little failure in my life is not acceptable. Even a little depression is not acceptable. You know, even, even a little guilt is not acceptable. Even a little shame is not acceptable. Even if I think a little less than what God thinks about me is not acceptable. You know, it's time this morning as we talk about freedom, that it's time to, to be able to rise up and to be able to stand in that. I want you to turn with me to Galatians 5 1. It says this right here it says, uh, Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom which Christ has set, made us free, and don't be entangled again in the yokes of bondage. Well, and, and what you're thinking is, Sean, well, okay, well, how do I do this? As we stand firm in the freedom that Christ has set us free, that, so that, that, that we don't go forth and fall, you know, that, that we got to stand against these lies. These lies of the devil, and sometimes they're lies that, that we tell ourselves. That you know, because uh, we give the devil a whole lot of credit, and we're like, you know, get, get away from me, devil, get away from me. But I'm going to tell you that there's a lot of lies that I tell myself. There's a lot of things that I tell myself that ain't true. That, that you're not, that where I, I set the bar right here, that God sets the bar right there. And I'm like, well, you know what? I can only reach right here. You know, so what we got to realize is this right here that, that whether it be our flesh or whether it be the lies of the devil, that, that we got to say, hey, you know what? That I'm going to get off my spiritual butt and I'm not going to accept it. That I'm going to stand firm in my freedom that Christ has set me free. And you know, as I stand firm, that I don't get a choice. That I no longer get a choice. That, that, that you know, that if I want to get depressed, then I need to stand up and fight. Because my flesh would tell me that, hey, you know, uh, you might as well just give up. You know, in this area, you know, this is a part of your life. I think it's time to revisit these doors that we've shut along the way to say, hey, you know, that we've accepted that as our normal. It's time to go back and revisit these doors and reopen them and say, what's in this closet? What's in this closet? 
Because if it don't line up, if it don't line up, then let me open this door, get the spiritual broom and mop, and it's going to get out of my closet. That, that there's a lot of you know that there's a lot of unhappiness or you know a, a lot of uh, 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 frustration in our life that comes from things that we've accepted and just taken as part of our norm because we've just said hey you know that I'm going to shut that door and then I I'm happy with what I got yes I'd love to to be able to have this joy and have this peace but I'm just happy that I'm not where I used to be and we'll just accept that as a part of our norm when when God's saying hey you know what uh, here's the thing is. He didn't just die for, for X, Y, and Z, but he died for the whole alphabet. That it's time to be able to rise up. And some of you are thinking, you know, here, here's the thing is we've got to stand against the lies of the devil. You know, that, that, that we've got to be able to realize, hey, that you are good. You know, that God created you good. That God created you strong. Some of you think, well, you know, I'm weak. But God's created you strong. He's created you good. He's created you worthy. He's created you to be an overcomer, not to be somebody that's defeated all the time. Not even a little defeat. Not even a little defeat. That we got to rise against it. You know, so how do I do that? Well, you know, turn with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians 10. We're going to start with verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in, in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down the arguments of every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being able to punish the disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You understand what that says? So how do we do it? Okay, so, so here's the thing. Maybe, maybe you're buying in to what I'm telling you this morning. Okay, so Christ has set us free. Sean, I want to walk in this freedom. I want to stand firm in the freedom that Christ has set me free so I'm not entangled again in the yokes of bondage. But you know what? I feel this way. You know what? I'm, I'm thinking this. I'm thinking that. Well, basically what this is telling you is to take every thought captive, to line it up to the Word of God. If it don't line up, and then cast it down to bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. So, so it's saying this right here, when you think a negative, or you think a positive. You know, you, you can think of rainbows and sunshines, or you can think of thunderstorms. But you take that thought captive, you line it up to the Word of God. If it don't line up, then to cast it down. If it lines up, run it through the filter. So, so here's the thing, is if I'm walking along and I'm saying, hey, you know what? Well, today I, I just feel, feel like I have all kind of joy, you know, I'm having joyous thoughts and, and all this, you know, I'm feeling wonderful, so much peace. I'm running this, I'm, I'm lining it up to the Word of God. If it lines up, then I keep it. Now, today I'm feeling uh, you know, that, that I'm a little less than, I'm unworthy, I have some fear in my life. Well, you know, I take those thoughts, line it up to the Word of God. If it don't line up, then I cast it down. Then I say, hey, you know what, I'm not going to have these bad things going on up here that's going to produce outward actions. Then I'm going to say, hey, you know what, where, where maybe I feel like a loser today. Well, you know what? I, I reject that. I cast it down because God calls me a winner. It is that simple. Well, Sean, you know, it's just not that simple. It's just not that simple. I just, I can't control my thoughts. No. When you say that to yourself, when you say, hey, I can't control my thoughts, what we need to do, I mean, here's the thing, is if, you, if you're not going to control your thoughts, that's fine. But let's be honest with ourselves. I think honesty with ourselves is the first part. You know, it ain't that I can't control my thoughts. It's I'm too spiritually lazy to try to control my thoughts. Now, here, here's the thing. I mean, if you want to walk in misery, you walk in misery. But you take responsibility for that misery. You take responsibility for that misery to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm going to walk in depression. You know, it, it's not that, hey, I got to be depressed today. It's that you make a conscious decision to say, hey, you know, I'm going to be spiritually lazy and I'm not going to fight this, that I'm just going to walk and waller in this depression. It's, it's that simple. Now, here's the thing is you got to get off, the, off that spiritual couch and say, hey, you know, what? you're not just going to roll out of bed. And, and, you know, uh, everything be peaches and cream. 
Sometimes you've got to put forth some effort. Sometimes you've got to put forth some effort. And that's, that becomes an issue with Christianity today. Is you know, we're all good as long as you're not that, that, that God's given us winning lottery tickets every day. But a little adversity comes our way. And you know, we want to blame everybody and their mother but us. You know, well, you know, I can just. Meant to lose, I guess. Well, no, you made a decision to lose. You made a decision to say, hey, you know, that I'm not going to win today. That I'm not going to go forth and walk in victory today. That I'm not going to go forth and uh, have joy in my heart today or have peace in my heart. You know why? Because I'm making a decision that uh, as I have these thoughts come up, that I'm not going to cast them down, that I'm going to walk them out. And you know that if, if uh, you know I have some some negative or depressing or any kind of thoughts like that, and I, and I walk it out, then that's going to become who I am. But know this right here: just like the the young lady from Afghanistan that come over to the, to this country, if, when they come and said, "Hey, well, you know, you can get your driver's license, you can go to school, you can do this, you can do that," that she had a choice and decision. Well, you know, she could go with these newfound freedoms in her life. Or she could stay in her little closed-off apartment or whatever it was and, uh, you know, just wither away and die. You know, I'm going to tell you this right here. That if you have trusted Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior, and you're still walking in some of these bondages, that it's not that you have to. That you have to get out of the mindset of that individual who was in that old country. And to be able to say, hey, you know, that uh, uh, back then, and here's a good point, back then, this young lady did not have the power to stand against the oppression. As she come into the new country, as she come into a free country, you know, as the oppression came, and even in her mind, as the oppression came, she had the power to stand against it. Now, I want to go over a couple more verses with you. Uh, you know, and, and they're pretty, uh, they're pretty popular. Uh, let's go with uh, Philippians four thirteen. For all you, uh, I can't do it. It says, "I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me." So all you, I can't do it, become to, can kind of, again, let's be honest with ourselves. Let's transition to I can't do it to I won't do it. I won't do it. You know, if, if the depressions uh, are, are, you know, the fear or, or the guilt or the worry or the, you know, the unworthiness is... is uh, unforgiveness, any of this stuff that's haunting you today. This verse right here says, I, don't say I can't. Let's be honest. I mean, some of you, some of you is going to make some changes this morning, praise God. Some of you might make a decision to say, hey, I'm not going to do it. But do this right here. At least be honest with yourself. At least be honest with yourself. This verse says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So be honest with yourself to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I could come out of depression, but I choose not to. You know, what, uh, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is just one of those things I'm just not going to do. And instead of saying I can't, because God's created you in a way to where you go forth and you put forth your effort and you can do all things through him because he strengthens you. So, so let's not, you know, the devil's a liar and he'll deceive us. He's a good liar too. You know, I mean, the Bible says he's a liar. He's the father of all lies. You know, if I say, and I, and I do this with my class sometimes, I'm like, you know, if I call myself a dirt bike rider and I say I'm the father of all dirt bike riders, you're going to think, Sean is one tough dirt bike rider. Right? So, 
if the Bible says he's a liar and he's the father of all liars, then he is the ultimate deceiver. He is the ultimate deceiver. And, and here's, here's our issue is we've been deceived into thinking because, and it's not, it's not that we're dumb, but it's, he's the ultimate deceiver. So, you know, he can, he can have me plant a seed against myself. He can have, uh, you know, the, uh, just uh, all kind of things line up, make me believe something that comes directly against the Word. To where it says, hey, you know what, i got to walk in this, i got to walk in this. Well, you know, grandmother, mother, great-grandmother, all this walked in this. So it's, you know, that he can deceive us into thinking that we're something that we're not. But you have a choice that you can believe the Word or you can choose to walk in it. So here's where we're at so far. It's a, you know, uh, that Jesus has made us free. That we're supposed to stand firm in that freedom. In every aspect of that freedom. Uh, that, you know, that how to stand firm in that freedom. That, that, you know, that we take these thoughts captive, cast them down if they don't line up. And, and you know, to, to walk in the thoughts that do line up. To bring every disobedient thought into the... Or, or to punish the disobedient thoughts. To bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Uh, to know this right here, when, when we think that, hey, we can't do it, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I want you to do this right here with me. Stand with me. I might have told you to stand a little too soon, so you might be standing a little bit longer. Yeah, I uh Paul says this right here in Philippians, uh, in Philippians 3.12. He says, not that I've already attained, or am I already perfect. Now I want you to listen here. He said, you know, not that I've already attained, or am I already perfect, but I press on. He said, but I press on. Now I want you to listen to the rest of it too. We got a woo out of it. Let's, let's see if we can get a little bit more. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. I forget those things which are behind me. And I reach forward to the things which are ahead. Now, I want you to think about this young lady. I want you to think about her saying this. Is, you know, that here's what I had to do. Is I had to forget the things which was behind me in Afghanistan. I'm in a whole new country. And i got to reach forward for the things which are laid ahead. Now listen to this right here. It says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. A couple of things that stood out to me here. Is it started out with I press on. You want some victory in some areas of your life that you ain't been having victory. You know, and I'm not doubting, and it ain't for me to doubt. You know, you know if you're saved or not. If you're not saved, then today's your day to get saved. You know, and I pray for your courage and your boldness to, to be able to step out and to come down here and surrender and say, hey, you know, God, I want you in my heart. Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross. Now here's for the ones of you that are saved. For the ones that you that are saved, they're struggling with different things this morning. You know, you're just like this young lady. That you've come from a country to, to where, you know, that you're bound up. That you had no freedoms whatsoever. You come into this new country that we call Jesus. And you know, there's a lot of aspects of this country that maybe in your life that you're still walking in some bondage that you shouldn't be walking in. And I'm not going to tell you, look, here in, a, here in a minute we're going to have an altar call. And it's going to be up to you whether or not you, you want to come down here. And, you know, uh, and I, I, I pray that you listen to the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit, as He puts it on your heart, that you're bold enough, that you have enough courage to be able to step out and say, I don't care what people think, I'm coming down, I'm going to get my life right because it ain't about anybody around me, but it's about me. I hope that, that you're able to say that, but here's the thing is I want you to know this right here too. 
even though that is very, very important. How many of you have bought a car before? You know, when you went to buy that car, that was a big decision, right? You know, that next month, you had to make a payment on the car. And then the next month, you had to make another payment. I want to tell you that what you do here down here at this altar is a big decision. But payments are going to come. And that payment comes in the form of this right here. That when you come down here and you say, God, Jesus, I want to stand against this depression. I want you to take it out of my life. And I want to fight. That it, I know that you didn't create me to be depressed. I know that that's not a par part of my character. And in my new life, I have freedom from that depression. And I can do all things through you who strengthen me. That's important. That's at the car lot. You just signed the contract. But you know what? Later on today or tomorrow, depression will try to start whispering in your ear. And then it's time for you to make the first payment. It's time for you to make the first payment to say, you know what, uh, uh, I made that commitment, I signed that contract, and I'm going to make a payment. I'm going to say, you're not depression, you no longer have a part of me. That's no longer a part of my character, that I'm going to stand up to this or anything else, the guilt, the shame, the fear, whatever it is in your life. And I believe that, you know, if we have three or 400 people in here, that, uh, that 300, 400, three or 400 different things that, that, that we're dealing with. But I want to tell you this right here that God is bigger than all of them. And He's delivered you into that freedom. Paul sums it up. Paul sums it up by saying this right here. He says, you know what, I press. I press. You know what, I'm not going to determine. I'm not going to determine my tomorrow by yesterday. I forget the things that are behind me. You know what, I'm not perfect, but I'm going to forget those things that are behind me. And you know what, today's a brand new ball game. So the things that might have come through my door yesterday will have no business coming through my door ever again. Today is your day. You know, there's a bunch of contracts even right now being signed and they're going to make some payments. You know, what you do today is between you and the Lord. Go ahead. We're so glad that you joined us in service today and we pray that God moved in your life in a, in a very special way. We pray that, that you enjoyed it and, and, and that, that God just touched your heart. And today, I want to make sure we don't ever leave a service without giving an opportunity for everybody to make the greatest decision that you could ever make in your life. God's Word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and His Word teaches us that if we believe He is who He says He is, and He did what He said He would do, that, that if we believe that He died on the cross for our sins, and that God our Father raised Him up from the dead, and we profess Him as Lord and Savior of our life, that we could be saved. And today, praying, if you haven't made that decision, God and God only knows the heart of every person. 1 Kings 8 and 39, you know your heart, God knows your heart. If you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision. And, and even to think about it, what do you have to lose? Today, you didn't tune in by chance or coincidence. You didn't tune in, you know what, by chance happening, you're here by divine appointment. So if you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision today. And if you do, we want to hear from you. We want to know what took place in your life. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a number, an app, the website, that you can reach out to us and let us know what's happening. And if you got prayer requests, if you're watching and you got prayer requests, we got people praying all the time. Let us know. Send your request to us, and we promise you, we're going to, to, to put it before folks, and we're going to put it before God. If you get those answers, you know what? Let us know. Let us know what's happening with you. And if you want to come at any time, we'd love to have you to be a part. You're a part of our church family right now. We'd love to have you. If you want to come here, we'd love to see you. I want to thank you again for, for joining us today. And thank you for, for just being with us. And know that, that, you know what? God's got you. He loves you and so do we. You have a blessed day. And know that, that you know what? This day is the day the Lord made so rejoice and be glad in it. We love you. Have a blessed day.